the game of a lifetime. Will it give you a lifetime of enjoyment or frustration? The golf clubs you choose will go a long way to deciding one way or the other. This is a technical film made by Precision Golf Forging, the largest manufacturers in the Southern Hemisphere exclusively devoted to making golf clubs. Kel Nagel, a member of PGF's advisory staff, the soul of quiet, good-humoured sportsmanship. Nagel's drive, the drive that won nine international championships. Frank Phillips, another Australian Open champion. He has earned overseas renown too with every worthwhile title in the Southeast Asia region. Another international Open winner, Eric Kremen, chief staff professional at PGF and a wizard with his little slammer. John Davis. Now, oh, there's nothing wrong with the film. A left-hander, Davis is Australia's counterpart, a British Open champion, Bob Charles. Look, our middle name is golf. Davis, Nagel, Phillips, Kremen, here is where their clubs are made. The most self-contained golf manufacturing plant in the world. 50,000 square feet of modern plant and machinery. The badge that Australian manufacturers are proud to display. Our own export trophy, the first awarded to a sports good manufacturer. We led the way. Displayed here are standard clubs, but presently we'll show you our personalised tailoring system. Funny thing, woods get more real affection than the irons ever do. Our new type special duty sole plates play a big part in power balance modernisation. Next time you're in your professional shop, take a good look at a PGF matched set. See the really exceptional workmanship, beautiful graining, dead flush inserts, crisp stamping of irons, and the restrained dignified styling. Aren't they excellent? Notice how PGF weight placement goes to the toe with long irons, then moves centre and towards the heel in the shorter irons for a premium on accuracy. The shaft, heart and soul of your swing. After years of research with Australian British Tube Mills and American True Temper Corporation, PGF developed its own, the double action shaft. In PGF's design, the steps are not evenly graded, but are separated into two series of short steps. The upper steps under your hands collect every atom of power and shoot it down the shaft. The lower steps transmit the thrust to the club head without torque or toe flutter. This second series squares the face to the ball, imparting maximum impact. The flex of a shaft is measured in poundage marked on all PGF clubs. Instead of the old conventional division into ladies, regular, semi-stiff and stiff shafts, there are no less than 15 grades of flex in the double action range from which to find the shaft perfectly suited to your game. Each of these numbered grades has a different flex. Each grade has an individual length for each club in the bag. In this highly developed specialized plant, here is the wood section. Every operation from turning to shape to final polishing is supervised by a master craftsman. Genuine apprenticeship, patient coaching and thoroughly absorbed learning are vital to supply the craftsman that PGF standards require. The iron section. The club heads have their birth in the battery of forging hammers. These giants are an important part of PGF's unique self-sufficiency as a manufacturer of golf clubs. This is the polishing room. The tool room, literally the key centre of the PGF plant, where precision machines convert the designs of the wisest golfers and engineers into accurate dies. In one of our showrooms, John Davis is taking the vital statistics in a golfing sense of a young lady referred to us by the professional at her club. Fingertips to ground, feet to ball. It's good sense to start with the shafts for her clubs. The shaft connects the golfer to the ball, and this is the first thing to be got right. But there is other information to be taken, for many factors make up her playing equation. Eric Kremen records it all for translation into the woods and irons, best suited to her physical makeup and her golf characteristics. Golf professionals everywhere endorse our personalized tailoring system. They cooperate by helping the golfer fill in the mail order chart and specifications where the customer cannot visit our headquarters in Sydney, Australia. Orders from all over the world are analyzed and are processed in the front office before being passed on to the factory where the order is carefully made up component by component. 
PGF makes testing tables for professional shops, used, for instance, by Bill McWilliam in making checks when answering queries by a club member. Such checking gives the golfer the insurance of 100% accuracy and PGF encourages club professionals to test exhaustively all the clubs they stock. These checking tables are made at PGF. In addition to length and flex, shafts are rigidly categorized for weight. These scales register to one 128th of an ounce. Every component from every section has its own history sheet on which weight and all other information is recorded. Clubs made with consistent characteristics have a great deal to do with consistency in shot making. And we need no better reason for making consistency one of the big built-in factors in PGF clubs. The poundage test to establish the exact flex category of this particular shaft, 35 and a half pounds, the extra stiff grade, through 28 and a half pounds, half a point below the old regular or medium grade, down to 22 and a half pounds. This one would be right for many women and for seniors. And so it goes, endless calibration, untiring effort to ensure that the club ultimately put together will be perfectly tailored to the player. Here is PGF out of control the deflection test apparatus. It plots the behavior of the shaft at impact that establishes the all-important kick point. But to this, gross weight and swing weight must be related in making the perfectly tailored club. The double action shaft provides unbroken sequence down to the player's range of clubs, making possible genuinely matched sets. This creates a consistency which permits and encourages a natural repeating swing, the flowing one swing action from driver to wedge. From the full 44 inch shaft for the driver, to the 42-inch shaft, the slammer shaft, and again the deflection test information is recorded for future use. Likewise, the progressively shorter shafts are tested and their characteristics recorded down through the whole range of irons until we reach the shortest and stiffest shaft for the given grade, the shaft used for wedges. Well, even a double action shaft needs something on its end to hit the ball with. PGF is the only club making company with its own molding division. And our latest club head material is cyclo wood, a plastic with all the feel of wood. Weatherproof, shockproof, it cannot shrink or swell, its weight never varies. From one single operation, the complete head comes out in finished shape. Another tremendous advantage, the head is molded to a predetermined shaft line. Significant to performance, the impact area is an integral part of the club head giving completely solid connection with the ball. For some drivers, PGF uses the finest persimmon wood imported from America. The persimmon billets are like this when they reach us, but this sculpturing speedily changes their shape. Now the profile cutter gets to work, programmed to the shape that our researchers, our engineers and our professionals tell us is most efficient. The hydro seeding process to keep out moisture from the pores of the wood, an enemy that has ruined millions of clubs and spoiled so much golf. Layers of first grade sugar maple are bonded into laminated blocks that we call rex strata. The layers are first waterproofed and after they've been hydraulically bonded into one piece, the billets are again sealed against moisture. Drilling the shaft line is done by leading craftsmen. The lathes in this section shape right or left hand club heads of great precision. These are bored exactly through neck and sole to ensure precise lie and loft when the shafts are inserted. The club presents a perfectly true hitting face at all times. Nowadays, all the PGF woods have inserts of the indestructible plastic cycler wood on the face that collides with the ball. There was a time when professionals used to pride themselves on hitting the ball on the screws when driving. 
Not anymore. With PGF Woods, there aren't any screws. The inlay is joined to the head by a powerful adhesive under pressure, and what this bonding has joined, no man can put asunder. The precisely set routing recess for a mathematically exact insert. Likewise, soling the wood must be a perfect fit to ensure weatherproofing against the elements and to avoid any variation of swing weight or of overall weight. If you've ever hung a door and struggled with the hinges, you'll appreciate these two power tools. The Slammer family of Cycler Wood takes special duty sole plates. Narrow, heavy bronze alloy for little Slammer, stainless steel for grand Slammer, a club of driver length from any fairway line and lightweight alumaloy sole for Super Slammer, which gives higher impact weight to suit the teed ball. These sole plates are forged right here on the premises. Now let us examine the weights that result from careful control of all components. Back to practicing our scales, you might say. Dead on line at seven ounces. PGF maintains low head weights to ensure club head speed. Now number three wood, Another lightweight beauty. These components add up to slightly less, one eighth of an ounce less. And these go up by a fraction, the components for a number four wood. Extra weight can be added by lead pellets under the sole. This permits precise coordination of swing weight, which is not gross weight of club, but the weight the head swings at on the end of its shaft. Components having been tested and found true in all respects, they would not have reached this section if they weren't, we come to the assembly of clubs, each according to prescribed specifications. insurance. PGF gives double security by pinning as well as gluing. On goes the grip over an underlisting built up to exactly the grip required by the dimensions of the individual golfer's hands. Facing the club. This is done under the control of chosen craftsmen when, for good reason, some variation is required from the curvature of bulge established by research and proven design. The normal facing is done mechanically by the Kermeth automatic facer. The bench test for swing weight. PGF swing weight scales interpret this important factor in fine calibration for the purpose of matching clubs. The weight is corrected and inevitably the article is checked again. Even the screws have been weighed and taken into account and now the sole is attached permanently. With the fine woods and laminated timber that PGF uses, all finishing and polishing proves amply rewarding in the final product. The surfaces that sustain impact with the ball are now of materials that permit scoring as is done with the irons. This scoring assists ball spin and control. Into the spray shop for staining and coating with lacquer. We offer a variety of finishes from Black Magic to Rich Rosewood to meet the variety of individual preferences. Polishing for a gloss to be cherished and preserved by head covers.
winding, now done semi-automatically, which will recall for veterans of the game, the tarred thread that used to be familiar in pro shops. Final inspection by the manager of the wood section, yet another and final check, and careful recording of the ultimate result. The swing weight laboratory. Here we find Tim Woolbank with lie and loft gauges. Woolbank is the famous rookie PGF sponsored on his first world circuit tour. The lie gauge gives the angle of hosel to leading edge, flat, upright, or anything between. The loft gauge pinpoints the angle of each club face. Another scale measures slice or hook. It is emphatically clear by now that at the PGF plant guesswork is ruthlessly eliminated. Gold-plated sets sell in exotic countries and a sprinkling in North America. Gold finish notwithstanding, they're still meant for playing use and they need to be tested like all the rest. The pendulum test determines whether the wood is heavy in toe or heel. It's a searching test to avoid possible loss of power and accuracy. Woods are engineered to closest tolerances. Perfection through precision. Woods wanted by golfers all over the world. Let's return to the tool room to begin a look at the manufacture of irons. Here specialists make dies for the forging of iron heads. The dies are variable, accepting inserts according to design, weight placement and ballistics research. And we proudly claim they produce the most remarkable low scoring instruments ever made available to the ambitious golfer. Not even putters, those most unpredictable clubs, escape scientific attention. The Iron Master David Fife, one of our eminent craftsmen. They change the die, putting on a forging hammer, one with the appropriate insert for a production run of a particular design and shape of head. After every production run, the die is removed and taken to the tool room for minute inspection by the specialist die makers. PGF uses stainless steel for its irons. The unpromising bar is heated under pyrometer control. Then it's formed in the die, forged to basic shape. The hammer comes down with a force of two and a half tons. The heads are cold trimmed to eliminate need for excessive grinding. They're tipped into a wheel abrader to remove scale. Comparison brightly shows the progress made in finishing the product. In our international Starline model, the name is not stamped, but it's part of the precision forging, an unprecedented technical feat. We evolved it as a challenge to forging technology. This machine reduces the hustles to rifle accuracy. Here the irons, like the proverbial poor, are having their faces ground. The importance of accuracy is emphasized by the realization that hairline error could result in as much as 40 feet off line in a 200 yard shot. This importance extends too to the accuracy of face scoring, once done by hand, but now done by exact and unvarying machine impression. And so to the operation of reaming to receive the double action shaft.
the final grinding to exact weight before the head goes on to be stamped. And only an expert and experienced man knows where to reduce weight while retaining designed shape. Heavy duty 35 ton roller stamping machine indents the name with clear cut definition. But it does so without altering the loft or the lie or the shaft line. The PGF symbol on a club is an assurance that every aspect, every consideration has been checked four times. So here is another checking station, this time for loft and lie. Stainless steel of high chrome content is not merely a matter of appearance. PGF is dedicated to research and came to realize that plated steel could not meet its aim to make the world's best iron. Hence the company's decision to use stainless steel. And they leave the polishing section with a sheen that won't wear off. Inspection is essential to quality control and it's also a determining factor in assembly of the eventual clubs. Weight variation in a head will decide what components are to be brought together. They pass an inspector's eagle eye, practice to detect the slightest flaw. Nearly all the heads from the forges are without flaws, but no risk is permitted, so that she has a magnifying glass to assist close examination. Preparing to give the face of the iron its sighting frame. This is done by sandblasting. The operator masks the head, then subjects it to a man-made sandstorm. This imparts to the business end of the club head its marked, determined look, and by contrast, throws up the gleam of the rest of the instrument. The last finishing process is an application of glamour, by colouring in the stampings according to a heraldry worked out for the various models. Most carry the familiar PGF shield, black with steel letters. Other colours are white, gold, red, and sometimes blue. A set of flashing irons confers an advantage on its owner. Dignified and restrained, yes, but not stuffy, so that PGF allows itself high styling. Like the woods at a similar stage of manufacture, irons now undergo another weight test. Weights are identified by colour bands to make sure that correctly weighted heads are fitted to appointed shafts in assembly. Weight helps to decide what degree of flexibility the shaft should have that is joined to it. Weight also determines the eventual swing weight. The head is check reamed to ensure that all shafts fit the hustles to the same depth. The company's own forging plant makes possible a variety of heads of exact design unknown to the mass production of heavyweight forgings intended for milling. Weight placement is part of PGF's initial forging. Completed iron heads in the storeroom. Row upon row of streamlined instruments that underneath their gleaming finish are scientifically sophisticated weapons for unending battle against the elusive white ball. Back to the swing weight laboratory again, this time to see a matched set of irons and shafts tested before final assembly. A rigorous policy of preventing even faint possibility of error. Now the shafts for the irons have their turn. Once more they're ranged against the deflection board. And a further pounded test will be made on the full set. Though this is still not the final examination, that will take place after assembly and as a prelude to passing out honours. Now the irons are checked for the required setting. There are four principal settings, goose, semi-goose, genie and straight. To meet professional requirements, the front edge of the blade retracts, but it still maintains correct alignment to an accurate shaft line.
This number seven looks to be semi-goose, but one of these graded discs will make sure. In goes the 16th gauge, showing up the leading edge, and the gauge lies in a straight line with the front edge of the hossel. Straight set club head showing no gap of light, no gauge required. The possibility of gooseneck adjustment now makes rechecking of loft and lie necessary for a thorough examination. Coming to grips at last, you might say. A company which prides itself on leaving nothing neglected, it offers a wide choice of dressings for the handles of its well-wrought scoring instruments. As with its cycler woods, it has a grip that is a completely moulded product. Standardised, they have the advantage of giving every club in the set an identical grip familiar to the hands. Or do you think that leather possesses a finer feeling of quality? Hide is sliced into regular strips by machine. A perforated pattern imparts a luxurious look. A practical consideration is that it improves the handhold. The strips are skived along the edges to ensure regularity of overlap when the strips are wrapped on over the underlisting. Finally, the leather is sewn in place with a colourful nylon thread. All weather moulded rubber or handsome leather, a matter of personal choice. PGF insists on providing an efficient, comfortable connection between the player and the club, but the outer wrapping is left to you. They even take the decorative ferrules into account in the battle against weight, a battle in which their big push has been a shaft notably lighter for given strength. Don't imagine that these fussy people have forgotten to weigh these trifles. The collar, as well as the grip, rubber grip and its collar amount to just under two ounces. Now the components have come through, let's assemble the irons. The shaft is fitted, and Larry Nelson drills the hustle to receive a stainless steel rivet. And you might call this a signature of the maker in invisible writing, because in the buffing, the rivet disappears. Here's another shaft being prepared, and adhesive applied to the underlisting before deft and practiced hands put the grip into place. This process, would you believe it, sends us back to the laboratory. An assistant puts the grip to the test by gauge and proves the finished article. Decorative Metcal show both the prestigious double action insignia and the poundage rating. The set is given a registration number and the number goes into the records. Should one club ever need to be replaced, it can be duplicated exactly. Now that the club has been shafted and gripped, this might seem the finish of the meticulous processes and systematic procedures but no one is allowed to take anything for granted at PGF. So the club is put to a final test for loft and lie and length. 
Tim Woolbank makes the last check that it accords in all respects with its specifications. Then, by unvarying practice, he gives the swing weights a last solemn run through to make undeniably certain that the whole is a uniformly matched set of clubs. Here's your set waiting to be delivered, unless, like so many golfers, you rush in to collect it. And here's something you won't see anywhere else. Those irons of yours on magnetic chucks. Look at that superb lineup illustrating variation of lie and correct positioning of shaft. A considerable part of the company's top grade output is exported. Hence these well-made, smartly finished articles in the warehouse awaiting shipment. Made in Australia, a tag to be proud of, especially for a sporting goods manufacturer whose products are recognised on world markets. Undisputed leader in value of clubs exported, PGF sends its top grade models wherever golf is played, creating ever more sophisticated standards in the worldwide golf explosion. Well, Eric Kremen again, and he sells his work. On the line of Canberra in Sydney Harbour and about to start a trip. Eric will conduct one of his golf clinics on the voyage and combine this with visiting some of PGF's overseas markets. Bet you can't hit the growing opera house, even with the super slammer. And not far short. Here's the grip that does it, pure classic Varden, on a club that Varden never dreamed of. And one more time, and the flashing white ball curves into the sunny blue water. Such poise, such mastery, such golf clubs. The liner Canberra carrying an important cargo, what we believe to be the world's best golf clubs. Yeah.